from Galvanize, San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering the Apache Spark community event. Brought to you by IBM. Now your hosts, John Furry and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for this special CUBE presentation for the IBM Spark Community event here live at Galvanize in San Francisco. Workspace Incubator, great place for developer education. IBM's big announcement today, their commitment to Spark. Um, they didn't say any numbers, but I'm counting in the hundreds of millions of years to quote Bob Picciano on, the, on, on my call with him on Friday with Rod Tom. Dollars. So, you mean dollars. Uh, <laughs> dollars, well that, yeah. It's going to last for hundreds of millions of years. Yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> it's getting late in the day, got the beer coming. Um, Rod Smith's our next guest. Rod, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. You were Glad the catalyst be behind Spark at IBM. Worked hard on it, yep. Yeah, you guys, tell a story. What's the story? Well, we worked on uh, big data, and I have a group of folks that uh, go out and work with customers all the time. And when we were doing Hadoop, we would do these cool applications that sometimes, you know, small clusters, 20 minutes, you get a result, and the customer would say, can you do that in a couple seconds? kind of look around and go, well, what changed? I mean, did, did the business problem? And they couldn't tell us, but it was one of those data points in your head that go, something's not quite right. You know, what's, what's changing or what are they trying to tell me that they can't? And that's when we started learning. You know, customers were looking for uh, technology that they could iterate on quickly, you know, open-ended questions. It wasn't the, you know, give me a problem, do the uh, compute piece, yeah. you know, output, I'm done. This was, oh, gee, there's the journey. I, I now see some interesting insights. I have other questions. Was so there something not right, the data that they got didn't match their uh, hypothesis, or was it the expectation that if I can do it fast on Google and, and find a Thai restaurant down the block, well, why can't it work yeah, that some, way? Something doesn't write was with me that said, why can't you tell me what you're really trying to accomplish? Okay. What I learned is that as we go through these kind of digital transformations, real, real time, they were thinking about how their business is going to change so fast. And so the problem's always been for technologists and vendors like IBM, tell us the problem, we pick out the technology, and you're pretty well stuck with it. You know, it stays that way. And they wanted more flexibility, you know, open-ended questions, <coughs> um, lots of different data sources on demand when they had to have it on this. They wanted to see results along the way. And they would rather have analytics be approximation that they could use quickly rather than after the fact and more accurate. Okay. So, you know, when you yeah. went through that, it wasn't, they couldn't find a BI person to talk to about it, and they couldn't find a data person. So, you know, it was fun to try to put, put piece puzzles together, and that's where Spark came into this. So obviously, a lot of other trends are kind of vectoring into that convergence, which is, you know, in-memory databases. Absolutely. You know, the, you know, the flash for persistent store on yep. the storage yep. side. So this, you know, you guys are close to all that action. What was the aha moment for, for within IBM saying, hey, you know what, this Spark thing is the next Linux. We, we got to get out in front of this um, and help the community go faster and then kind of rising tide floats all boats. What was that flash point for well, you? Well, we, we had two of them. One was that uh, in our commerce group, um, there's ways that uh, they work on online pricing. Um, and there's a vendor standard which takes about a week when you get data off of a, a site, a retail site, they analyze it, they correct the analytics, they put it back up again. It takes about a week. But we showed them with Spark we could do it in about four hours. A week down to four hours. And now they started to think, oh, you know, what do we offer customers? Now we have ways to have not just one product, many products. W let's bring in other data, location data, traffic data, weather data, social data. So that kind of exploded internally on this is a big change. This is something that we can relate to customers. Some multiple data sources and the need for unification and speed? Or? And, sp and speed. Speed first. Speed kills, right? <laughs> speed first. Then it's like, hey, I got all the speed. I want to bring other data well, sets and, in. And it's time to value. I mean, if you're going to be a digital business and, and look at real time where it's going, um, Netflix, others have really set the standard on this. Okay, so then I'm going to, so let's take it <coughs> next level. So, Rod, you're crazy. We can't do that. It would disrupt all these other businesses we have. So, how does that conversation happen within IBM? <laughs> The way that happens in IBM is, Rod, you are crazy and you're going to cause me agita, so you know, please go away. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't go away easily. But you keep pushing on this, and, and part of my job is to work with customers. Can I show value so I can take the product team saying, you need to take this more seriously, I've got currency now. 
And then, as you just said, the marketplace starts to light up. You know, Spark yeah. is on the front pages. People are talking about how they're using it. Well, Hadoop is growing too at the same time. Absolutely. So what Hadoop does is seeds the market. Seeds the market. You see, you're playing in Hadoop, and you see the customer challenges, and then you're like, you, can, you guys just connect the dots. Well, and, and then it, it's back to the customer is talking about what their problems they want to use or the solutions they're looking for. So yeah, it takes time because yeah. it's, it's risky. I mean, it, all of us have quarterlies, what we're doing, but how do we now make it safer for people and IBM jump in the water so that eventually they don't hate me anymore? So what's your, what, what's your comment when a friend says, hey, Rod, you know, Linux was great, but it's a different era. Oh yeah. You know, here with cloud and mobile, open source with Apache's evolved to the point where it's very manageable mm -hmm. for vendors to be contributors as well with, with non-company mm -hmm. uh, contributors. How do you guys see the difference between those two worlds? Because really this is a Linux moment, but there's no big, bad, main, mini, mini computer companies, mainframes <laughs> out there, but they're specialized for like the Z systems are great, but like this is scale out commodity hardware, Hadoop, now that's growing. How do, you, what do you, how do you describe that? Because there is a Linux correlation. What Linux was for open source then, operating systems, now this is kind of distributed analytics. Well, I think you're, you're, you know, the, the uh, part of this is kind of real-time digital business transformations. And while there's not a you know, bad company out there, you know, Amazon and others have shown how they can be online businesses and use analytics and be very effective. But I'm a brick and mortar company and an online business. How do I do the same thing? And Spark starts to really show that no, it, they don't have a corner on the market, we can compete. So that's the big factor on this is, while it's not one company doing this, it's I need to be able to compete at the speed the businesses yeah. that didn't have the so legacy that I did. Amazon started kind of post recession or you know dot yeah. com bubble oh, bursting yeah, and 10 years. you know web services was just kind of kicking through if we remember our history lessons and, and what <laughs> happened was they really had no traction. They built some building blocks. That's they, right. They made a good decision to integrate two core building blocks, mm -hmm. compute and storage, mm -hmm. and they built from there. So in a way, you guys can enable companies to have their own Amazon-like ex experience because it's a fresh, clean sheet of paper, right? It, it is, and I think where Spark gets interesting is, is like you said, in the verticals. What do I do in retail? What do I do in healthcare? What do I do in finance? Right, very specialized. We've shown in Watson, you can do Watson for cancer research. You can do Watson for cooking, right? But yeah. they're very vertical now. So and specialized. That's Domain right. expertise becomes really interesting, right? That's the big part, and that's the part I really liked about Spark. They, the, t the community really thought about solution developers. You know, they, they stayed away kind of the middle ground. Now, you don't have to be a deep data person or a deep analytics, a BI person. What's the problem you want to solve? How can I help you do that? And I think that's a important factor. You know, that's factor. interesting is that that's because most people go, hey, this is speeds and feeds software. When you look at the solution, it's more holistic. That's right. But then you're really talking about customer problems, right? That's right. The, the so-called outcomes that people want. <laughs> well, that's what, and I think that's the part that I've enjoyed is I want to talk to you, you know, about what your problem is. I don't want to talk technology. I, you know, I don't want to have to make a technology choice from day one. Spark helps me with that. I don't unify <coughs> programming model. All those things come together so I can concentrate, we can concentrate on talking to the customer about, you know, learn from them. What are you trying to accomplish? You know, what's the next things on your list? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you know, looking at your uh, LinkedIn page, I love this. It, VP Emerging uh, Technologies for 20 some odd years. So <laughs> oh, that's you've, not seen, fair. you've seen a lot <laughs> of technologies come, a mm -hmm. lot of emerging technologies, mm -hmm. and the acceleration of these technologies mm -hmm. is, is only going more, right? You have a whole lot more in your portfolio you have to look at mm -hmm. today than, than you did yesterday or five years ago. Yep. Why is Spark so special in the cornucopia of technologies that you've seen come and go over the years? It's a good question, and, and uh, as I've done merging technologies, I've learned that I have to you know, listen to customers very carefully on it. And when I hear those kind of repeatable business patterns, do I see an economic change, a transformation that, that really sticks with me? And sometimes, you know, things have start really big, you know, they start out good and then they fade away. Right. Um, but I always look for technologies that seem to have lots of dimensions to them from a business value standpoint. Okay. That's what attracted me to Spark. And you know, my team working with some customers on POCs, we could do them quickly. You know, I'd really like to get to the point where you know, we, in industry, we with notebooks and others, we can do solutions in less than four hours for a customer. I mean, what better thing to take your you know, employee to lunch and pat them on the back for you know, something that you didn't expect for weeks? Well, one of the exciting things that you guys have done is you've shined the, the, the spotlight on Spark and you opened up the conversation 
globally around IBM's making a big move. Spark was a little bit of an outlier in the mainstream press. Mm -hmm. I mean, press were picking up Spark. Oh yeah, Berkeley, some credibility, great people behind it. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, wow, it's going to get the attention of CX, CXOs out there. And they're going to be like, hmm, if IBM's looking at it, it must be relevant because of the history you guys have with innovation. But they're going to ask you the question that I'm going to ask you, which is, it's not baked out yet. Where are we with this? What are you guys going to do? How does IBM work with the community to continue to bake out Spark? Because I mean, a lot of people are, are using it, bringing it in, but it's evolving super fast, mm -hmm. and that's going to be the question. Is it baked, and how does it get baked faster? So I think there's lots of areas that as we just talked about. If I'm doing retail or healthcare or finance, it's going to be lots of specialized analytics, because that's what Spark for, to me is, is enabling custom analytics on this. Second part is, as you think about how you want to look at bigger problems, I think that you know, many times our learning is to try to, you know, once we got a technology, let's make everything fit it, rather than starting to separate it by business problems. And I think we can do that now, or we can bring to the table uh, technology, learning, best practices around this, and solutions. I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's how Spark can be integrated into a business solutions and, and our customers very quickly. And hopefully those customers see it broadly from an interoperability standpoint of what they're going to do. So the final question I have for you is, um, what was the biggest learning that you've taken away from this process that was magnified through this whole journey of uh, taking IBM from being a, a, a participant in the, in, as a citizen in the community early on as a founding mm -hmm. member of Spark. This is back in 2009, so it wasn't like <laughs> no one knew anything was going on. And you know, we were covering Hadoop from the beginning, so mm -hmm. we'd love to watch these ecosystems grow. But from, from the early days to now, today, mm -hmm. what was the biggest thing that you learned that was magnified out of all the reactions, all the feedback, all the customers? What can you share? I, I think for me, uh, when we did a Spark hack, you know, our hackathon piece, when 28,000 IBMers showed up with ideas. That told us 28, a lot. 28,000. Yeah, 28,000. So now you stopped, and, and 28,000 people who you know, were focused on the customer, so they had a thought of how this could be relevant. This is great. I mean, this isn't, like back talking before, this isn't one little vein, one little stream, it's big. And it big was what we can do for our customers. And when was that? Um, about uh, two months ago. How so did you pull go. that off? Just send an email blast? All the IBMers put on the message board? Do a crowd chat? What did you do? <laughs> well, one, you put out an email blast. <laughs> the second one is uh, you put on a web conference to explain to people what you're going to do with it and what you'd like them to do and how we're setting it up. And, and then you step back and you know, kind of cross your fingers and hope people show up. Yeah, right, and right. then when you, know, you invite 10,000 and 28,000 show up, yeah. you kind of know that we're turning a corner as a company on understanding yeah. how we can use that for, this, you know, this also highlights this whole connectedness of Absolutely. Internet of Things and mm -hmm. people are things too, so they're a mobile device. When you have that kind of people close to the action, the creativity is there, right? They're on the front lines and they don't feel like that the work they do is going to be taken by the machinery in the old days. I got to go back, all these hurdles, I got to jump. <laughs> now they can instantly be there yes. with some solutions. So that's, yes. that's super compelling. Um, the next question is security. And how, does, how do you see that weaving in? Because now one of the things that came up, well first let me, let me back up before I get to security. <laughs> let you think about the security question for a second. Last week at Hadoop Summit, we uh, were talking with the, uh, the, the Hadoop ecosystem, Hortonworks, ODP conversations, et cetera. But when you looked at kind of like reading the tea leaves, it was Spark that was kind of stealing the show. The mm -hmm. subtext was Spark. Mm -hmm. All the Spark sessions were packed. The developers had, was salivating over Spark. I'm so glad to hear that, I didn't why, know that. Yes. Why is that? Why are the Hadoop developers salivating over Spark? Is it because they want it to go faster? Do they see extensions? Any thoughts? I think that, uh, I'll say it two ways. One is I think there was, and since I did Hadoop for quite a while, I think people thought for a while Hadoop was going to be an analytics platform. And it, it kind of went down the path of being a more generalized platform so you could do more than map reduce jobs. So there's been this pent up demand for really analytics focus. And Spark offered that focus and the performance side. I think that's the part so that- So Hadoop sold kind of a false dream or it didn't materialize fast enough. I don't think it materialized Not a false dream, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. They, they promised the moon. Great. Yeah, no, yeah it, well, and people set those, you know, Well, internally. the press maybe. Yeah, I don't think the vendors <laughs> oh, were. I think it was more of the. Oh, well, vendors, you know, it did too. It's, well, unstructured you know. <laughs> data does that. Unstructured data does that. Storing data right. and being able to act on it creates some interesting dynamics. Right. I mean, I've worked with customers who 
you know, started to put data in Hadoop, but to have put data in Hadoop, you know, we're only going to do a year's worth of data and then end up putting three years of data because they want to do Monte, or, uh, Monte Carlo simulations against Don't it. Don't say Monte Python, that's John Cleese. He threw thinking, water on you know, us and we love it. Years, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? It's like, well, those are my days. <laughs> we have um, them on the queue. <laughs> but the problems, as we are talking about before, like, you know, our internal use, we can produce, um, you know, in interesting innovations in days. That's going to attract audiences because now they can show their, you know, business people what they can do for them. That's what's really driving this. I mean, if you've got a CXO, you know, CMO says, you know, show me what you can do, you know, do segmentation on my population for these products. They want it in, in minutes, not, uh, you know, going to run it in different jobs and, you know, over a certain period of time. I was just talking with uh, the, uh, the CEOs of DocuSign, Box, um, AT&T, well, now the CEO of AT&T was like an executive director, and then uh, EVP of platforms at Salesforce. Mm -hmm. The common thread amongst those executives was the new digital transformation had such a dynamic, or impactful mm -hmm. economic impact. Yes. I mean, DocuSign was using examples how literally um, Deutsche Telekom saved $230 million on one process. Yes. One yes. process. Yes. With analytics and yeah. process improvement. It's extreme, it's, it sounds funny, but it's extremely low hanging fruit. <laughs> we haven't had technology and the economics to be able to support it. Yeah. Now we do. And now you're seeing the solution developer go, I think I can make a business result faster. Yeah. And if they can show it, then businesses react immediately. And I think that's the beautiful thing about what Hadoop has done. I mean, I brought that up earlier, trying to tease that out, but the reality that we're seeing is that that market's continuing to grow. Absolutely. But there's a world beyond Hadoop. Yep. I mean, you know, Hortonworks is a public company. Yep. I mean, IBM is massive. Yep. So you got Hadoop, and then Spark's a beautiful extension to that that enables so much more. Well, I think Spark will go further because it's more, to me, is another dimension. It's an integration technology. So I can have Spark hooked up to legacy systems without Hadoop, you know, in there doing analytics, in there being a, uh, an avenue for doing joins on data, doing analytics on unstructured and uh, transactional yeah. data, weather data, pulling it all together. And I think that's the, again, talking about multi-dimensional, yeah. that's where And that was hard point. even five years ago. So Absolutely. any relational database, that's a nightmare. Yeah, and, and you're asking about security, so I don't want to touch on yeah, it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> go ahead. So part of the things <laughs> that I like about Spark is uh, the technology is called Resilient Distributed Data Sets, RDDs. So I read data from a source and I make it into this RDD, I can work on it. That gives me a great data point, or a great interaction with a Cassandra. Datastax did a really great job of a Spark driver. So you think about this in businesses for a DB2 or something, now I know where I can put my security and my governance. I can put those at certain endpoints now as I'm reading in my application and writing these things out. So again, back to my point of an integration, it's not something that I'm trying to get around a business, yeah. I'm actually integrating. Yeah, yeah. Being Extending able their life and or capabilities. That's right. So I got to ask you the internal IBM question, my last question is, <laughs> what's the vibe like at IBM? Because you know, I've, I've been, um, you know, I worked at IBM way back in the days, back in the 80s, Ooh. and um, <laughs> the culture's changed, right, so much. Mm -hmm. But there's still a huge technical group of people at IBM. Mm -hmm. So I got to ask you the question, with all this new cloud innovation, all this new, capabilities to do stuff differently. Mm -hmm. What's it like for all the technical guys at IBM right now? Because they got to be like, hey, we can now do this. We can, so new capabilities are emerging. What's the, what's the vibe like? And what are some of the things that, uh, that are low hanging fruit that are, <laughs> that are game changing? Because low hanging fruit is game changing today. Oh yes. So I, what's the vibe internally at IBM? The vibe internally is very hot. I mean, the guys and gals at this, you know, look at cloud computing, look what we've done with Bluemix. It got, it's getting, you know, great press. It's getting great results with customers. Back to this time to value piece. It's new to us. I mean, there's only a small group that started that. So now the rest of the IBMers are going, this is really cool, yeah. how do yeah. we do it? Now you've got analytics that, you know, we're starting, you've been, you know, competencies are on this. Now you can do the real time aspect. So yeah, the vibe is really All hot. those little silos, you know, identity system here, I got to build all this software. Now you can got to go horizontal. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of a new thing. That's going to be exciting. And it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, my final question, I guess is my final, <laughs> final question is. <laughs> Have you been keeping track? Okay. Put some spark on that. This is the sixth some final question. Analytics. Well, Rod, it's great, great <laughs> to have you on theCUBE. You're awesome. Great, Absolutely. great commentary, great, great insight. Um, spark in the cloud is what yeah. Databricks announced. What about mm -hmm. on-premise? I'm a customer, I want, I want on-prem. I don't necessarily want to do. What's mm -hmm. next? I, I think Core OS or other stuff? 
oh, I think you're going to see, you know, like hybrid models for cloud where, where Spark as a service is there, on-prem. I think one of the really exciting parts to me is that one of the unified program model, two of the portability of the analytic models. So let's say I start on-prem because I'm worried about security and other things, and then I want to move it to a cloud service. Well, I don't have to go rewrite it. I can just move the analytics over from a model standpoint. So I think you're going to see this evolve very fast as people want to do either on-prem or hybrid uh, or you know, dedicated. Because of the product. integration capabilities and the distributed the nature point. of it. That's the point, yep. Awesome, well, I'll let you get the last word on the segment. Share with the folks who's not or aren't watching. What is this all about today? Why is in San Francisco today IBM's announcement? What's so groundbreaking about it? I know you're part of it and you're a little bit biased, but share with the folks why what, why now? What's this all about? What's, what's, what's going on here? Well, we think that the kind of epicenter for Spark Innovation is here in San Francisco and Amp Lab and what Databricks and others are doing here. And we want to be a part of that. And I think uh, Spark Technology Center we're setting up is about how we can contribute and, and learn and you know, help the community grow. We think this is going to- You brought some food to the party. I mean, you, or well, I said I earlier, so. beer, right? You bring a, you know, the, like the wine. ML. Yeah. yeah, you got the, got the wine, <laughs> Napa Valley, of course, you got to go with the wine. Well, craft beer. Here's good in North, North Bay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really you. appreciate the Thank insight. Appreciate so this it. is great color from an expert at IBM here. We're on the ground. This is theCUBE's special presentation live in San Francisco. We'll be back with more with live coverage of the breakouts and the, and the event tonight. IBM Spark community event here in San Francisco at the Galvanized Workspace Education Center. We'll be right back.